All right. Uh, Todd, do you want to take it away with uh, just educating folks on what TAD is and our mission and why we're here? Uh, our mission is to provide uh, educational and training by bringing in uh, vendors and professionals that can share the latest and greatest technology so that we can become more effective and efficient in our school and working environment. Uh, this division was founded by a gentleman by the name of Tim Cramner, who was a, uh, a pioneer in Braille technology. Um, Tim was a member of the National Federation of the Blind, I believe in the mid 60s. I'm not quite sure when he got started, but uh, he is, uh, he, he, he was a genius. Uh, he did not graduate from high school. He's a student at KSB, um, but uh, he just had uh, a knack for electronics and um, the, the, the Braille and Speak, uh, the all of the uh, uh, Braille printing devices, uh, he's had some part in that. And actually, he was also a member of the National Federation of the Bo uh, of the Blinds. Uh, uh, he was on the NFB National Board. Um, and just I, there's not enough that I can say about him. If you want to read more about Tim Cramner, uh, you can go to uh, NFB. Kentucky, and that's spelled out, N-F-B-K-E-N-T-U-C-K-Y-P-A-D dot O-R-G. And uh, we've got uh, some information on Tim under NFB News and Notes. All right, Angela, do you want to go ahead and talk about the uh, convention? Sure. I'm... Super happy for everyone that has joined us this evening. Um, and I'm hoping that this presentation reaches others who were unable to join, but may have some value from our presentation. So I wanted to talk a quick moment about our upcoming National Federation of the Blind of Kentucky State Convention, which is being held October, the weekend of October 6th through 8th at the Hilton Garden Inn Northeast in Louisville, Kentucky. We will kick off our convention with our TAD Symposium. This is an event we have hosted for many years now and one in which this particular division um, creates and runs. Um, so we will have a lot of presenters and vendors. There will be an opportunity to kind of talk one-on-one um, -on -one with some of these vendors and find out some information and your get your technology questions answered. Um, we will also have in the afternoon part of our, um, symposium, a, um, session for, um, I don't want to say elderly. That's not the word I'm looking for there, but, um, you get my jest and, um, more along the lines of like those needs after, um, maybe retirement. Um, and there will also be um, information for those that are low vision as well. So that will kick off our convention. We will um, then have resolutions. We will have social. We will have a, conduct our business on Saturday and Sunday. So it's going to be a great event. And I invite all to join. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so let's introduce a little bit, let's introduce the folks who will be talking just so folks know kind of who we are and our voices. So, um, I'll start and I'll pass it to, back to Angela and to Danielle. Um, so my name is Joseph Hodge, uh, been a member of TAD and BNFB, uh, for a few years now. Um, and I, I work in my day job at American, the American Printing House for the Blind. Uh, I do quality assurance work. So I, I'm testing these different operating systems sort of all day long. So uh, I'm excited to kind of teach, go back to the basics and just sort of, you know, um, make Windows less scary to folks. You know, Windows is a pretty large operating system. 
Um, and I'm excited to kind of go through some of it. You know, as we do these web trainings, we're going to you know, touch on all the different screen readers. And I think that's going to be exciting to sort of uh, hear from folks and gain an understanding on what they want to learn and what they need to learn. So uh, I'll pass it back to you, Angela, if you could introduce yourself. Hey again, um, my name is Angela Henderson and I am the TAD secretary. I've been a member of TAD for, well, many years now. And um, I'm very excited to be a part of this. I am a, a special education teacher, have been for many years now, and I'm also currently working on finishing my master's degree in teaching students who are blind and visually impaired. So as our technology ever changes, it's good to keep up on these things, especially working in the school system to be able to help my students, um, to be able to you know meet the needs of my students and help them be as successful as possible. And Danielle? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Danielle Burton, and I am the communications director for TAD. I've been on the board with TAD for quite a while now, and I am currently working at American Foundation for the Blind as a digital accessibility specialist, so that's what I do all day. All right, thank you, Danielle. Uh, she she's like uh, me. She plays a lot with a, a lot of different operating systems throughout the day. So, um, so we we sometimes yell about them a lot uh, in text messages. Uh, so, um, so one of the things we talked about getting started here uh, is you know in today's world, uh, Angela, Danielle, and I last Thursday when we were kind of practicing doing our run through, we talked about how we don't really use Windows in our day to day life. All the time anymore you know that's something we, we couldn't have said a decade ago you know it was such a vital part of our life but things like the iphone android you know those things have become more and more accessible uh but where i find i use windows and where i find i use more of, of a computing power is in, in at work or when i was going to college in particular um and for those things i think it's important to know uh the other thing is sometimes with voiceover on the iphone for example you can run into situations where you're filling out a form or trying to fill out a form and it just doesn't work. Um, and so, and I would say one big area that iOS could really gain to improve is word processing. You know, if I'm wanting to do serious note-taking or serious uh, writing, uh, formatting, um, I think that's a place where that the operating system in particular struggles still. So we're going to touch up briefly on that at some point in our series, but but today we're going to kind of learn about the basics. And I, I do want to start with this. The exciting news that some of the folks who may be a little bit older may not know is Windows is completely 100% accessible to set up on your own out of the box. So if you buy a new computer tomorrow because you've heard this event and you're like, you know, Joe, Angela and Danielle made me so excited. I'm going to go buy a Windows computer. Uh, when you pull it out of the box and turn it on, it will talk. Uh, and you can get through the setup on your own. So Windows by default has something called Narrator that's built into every device uh, that runs Windows 10 and 11. I wouldn't go any earlier than that. Um, and to turn it on, you hit Control Windows Enter, and that will actually turn on Narrator and give you enough speech to kind of get through the um, setup process of your computer and get to the point where you can install something like JAWS or NVDA, which are two Windows screen readers. Um, you can use Narrator as your, as your screen reader if you want to. Uh, there will be times where I think it's not going to perform as well as the other two screen readers would. Um, but these are tools in a toolbox, and I'm never going to say you have to use one screen reader or another. You use what's comfortable for you and do what's going to get the job done uh, in the best way possible that you can do it. So I'm going to share my sound. Um, we'll start it screen share. There we go. Pause share. Share. Can you guys, share, hear, pre can you guys hear Jaws? Just to make sure. Participants. Share option. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, we can okay, hear cool. it. Yeah, All right, awesome. Can, Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to hit the, the keyboard shortcut Windows M. Windows M. Desktop. Folder view. 
And I'm going to explain what the desktop is in a little bit, but I wanted to get out of the Zoom window in case people came in and started talking uh, or, you know, Jaws started talking. Um, so there's a few commands I want to kind of start off from the top. So when you are at your computer, one command, if you don't know where anything is, that's awesome, is the Windows search uh, box. And to get to that, you just hit the Windows key. Uh, so you can hit the Windows key and you're going to hear this. Search box edit, type in text. So it says search box edit. So let's say I wanted to find Bluetooth. So I wanted to connect like a Bluetooth device. I'm gonna just gonna type in blue. D L Bluetooth, Bluetooth and other devices settings, system settings, press right to switch. And it says Bluetooth and other settings. So you can already tell, like I didn't even get the E in there and it, it already kind of knows what I want to do. So I'm gonna press enter on that. Enter settings. Bluetooth button on. And now we're at the Bluetooth menu where you can actually turn, uh, where you can actually connect a, a keyboard or headset or whatever you wanted to. But let's just say I want to get out of this. So one command that's important to know is Alt F4. And the commands I'm showing you today and that we're going to be talking about today uh, are going to be universal. So it doesn't matter if you're using Narrator, it doesn't matter if you're using JAWS, and it doesn't matter if you're using uh, NVDA. So I'm going to press Alt F4, and it's going to take us back to where I just came from the desktop. Alt F4, desktop, folder view, list view, Microsoft. Ed so that's a really handy command. So if you ever open up an app uh, or, or just want to get out of something, Alt F4 will uh, be your friend. Um, so one other command that's really nice, um, and we have a lot here, uh, <laughs> but one other command that's really handy is going to be Windows E. E is an echo. Uh, that's going to take you to the Windows Explorer. Um, so I'm going to do that now, and we're going to hear... Windows E. File Explorer. Items view. Multi-select list box. Folders expanded. Desktop not checked. No. One of six. To move to an item. So that's going to take you into where you can view all of your home folders, like your documents, downloads, anything recent that you might have opened. Uh, this will be kind of where that is stored. You can also get to things like your computer... Um, your networks, uh, if you have any like drives on your network, etc. So it's a very powerful place uh, here. Alt F4, desktop. And I'm going to go back to the desktop. And I want to talk briefly. So those things that I just did were all shortcut keys. So one of the things about using Windows, using JAWS, using NVDA uh, and Narrator is that you're going to be using what's called shortcut keys to do a lot of different things. And I'll be honest, uh, the three of us on the call that are kind of doing this this teaching, we're all JAWS users and have been screen reader users for a long time. We don't know all the commands. I'll just be honest, there's so many commands uh, within JAWS, within NVDA, Narrator, et cetera. And then you add in like the mobile screen readers. There's no way anybody could theoretically memorize them all. The key though is to be able to use Google or uh, you know, just be able to understand like how to get to maybe where, what you need to learn. Um, so a lot of times when people come and they want to learn Windows, they'll say, I'll ask them, what, what is it that you want to learn? And they may say, well, I just want to learn everything. Well, that's very hard for a trainer or an instructor to sort of walk you through uh, learning everything because, you know, to be honest, we don't know everything and things change. You know, so when we go from Windows 10, which I mentioned earlier, to Windows 11, there's little odd and end things that just aren't there anymore. You know, the control panel where your settings are looks different. Um, you know, so the, the, the start menu, I'm told, is in the middle of the screen instead of the left-hand side, which doesn't matter to us who can't see it all. But still, it's there's these little changes that will matter. Um, so... Getting back to hotkeys, there's a few other ones I want to kind of go over to go over with you on. So we have, and this is a really handy one for those who use the iPhone with dictation. Windows actually has a dictation built in natively. Uh, you may or may not know about it. Uh, you can press Windows H anywhere. So anywhere there's a edit box, anywhere like in Microsoft Word or on the internet, if you're trying to fill in a box, you can hit that and you can type and then Windows H will, it's a toggle. So you press it once, start typing, uh, start talking, sorry. It'll type for you. And then you hit Windows H again, it'll toggle it off. And I'll be honest, it's one of the better dictation uh, systems I've seen yet. Like I was, I've always been impressed with Google on Android. Uh, they, they usually get things fairly accurate. Um, I've actually sat and played with this Windows one for about two or three weeks now, just because I was, you know, wanting to put it through its paces and it does 
really good. Uh, so if you've never used that, I would urge you to try it sometime. I, I think you'll be fairly impressed with it. Um, and it's it's nice to um, be able to do something like that just because, you know, if you're maybe in a situation where, you know, you're just tired, you know, we've been working all day, you know, us blind folks in particular, you know, we're going to be using that keyboard all the time, you know, so you can just get to a point where you're you're sort of tired of doing it. Having that dictation feature is a, is a nice feature to have. Um, so there's a new command in Windows 11. It's Windows Alt K. I'm not going to do that because if I did, it would actually mute me temporarily. Um, so that actually can toggle your mic on and off. Um, you do have to be running the newest build of Windows 11 for that. So I believe it was released uh, in May, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I have that note here and that's what it says. So I'm just going to roll with that. Um, Another important command is if you're working in particular or maybe in an environment that you don't know who's all around, uh, Windows L will lock your computer. So I'm going to do that now. Windows L, lock screen, getting ready, dot, 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 looking for you, dot, 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 making sure it's you, dot, 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 welcome back, Joseph Hodge, dismiss. All right, so what Desktop. You, you just heard there was me locking my screen, and then because I have this fancy Surface Pro, uh, it has a Windows Hello uh, in it and it was looking for my face and because I'm sitting here it just unlocked itself uh, back to the desktop so um, that if you wanted to like let's say run to the restroom or or maybe take care of something you can hit windows l that's going to lock your screen you get up from your desk nobody can come in and you know type or or do anything crazy to your computer uh, one other command um, that's really handy is windows control q uh, I'm not going to do this one either, just because it would actually start what's called Quick Connect. And what this does is if uh, I'm going to talk about another service real quick called Be My Eyes. And Be My Eyes is a free service that has uh, some technical support on there where you can talk to Microsoft. And why this is important is uh, so if you were to do Windows Control Q, it would give you a digit, uh, some numbers that you could give a Microsoft support agent. Or maybe you could give your friend if they wanted to log into your computer. And basically, it shares the screen that you're looking at with the person. Uh, and you're able to then uh, get support. And I actually used this myself a few weeks ago. I was playing with an Asus laptop. And I was um, there is a there's a thing. So if you hit start. Search box edit. Type in text. C-A-E-C-K. Check firewall status. Find result settings group. Check for updates. So there's a check for updates. This is super important. So I, I would hit the Windows key, got to my edit box, typed in check, and then check for firewall is the number one thing. I'm not sure why. And then I press down uh, to check for updates. And if you press enter here, enter settings, retry button to activate, press space bar. You will actually get to a spot where you can uh, search for updates. So mine's on retry because this is a brand new computer I'm on tonight. And it probably has failed at some point grabbing something when I was going between Wi-Fi. I'm not going to mess with this now because I don't want to. I don't want to have to restart during this Zoom call. Uh, but basically, what that will do is that Windows will um, actually um, download updates that Windows push out. So it could be security updates. It could be a brand new version of Windows uh, that comes out. So you definitely want to check for updates and keep your system up to date. Um, that's the best way to do it. Uh, and then anything that your manufacturer has, like drivers, um, you know, any kind of update like that will be in there. Um, so anyway, back to my little story. Um, so I, my when I was checking for the update, my um, something failed. There was a corruption. There was a file that just would it basically there was an update there that would never grab. So I actually called Microsoft. And we used the Windows Control Q during that call through Be My Eyes. Uh, and I shared my screen and they actually went in and helped me resolve the issue because I Googled it for a long time, y'all, and I was tired of dealing with it. Um, and I, I just got frustrated because I, I felt like, I, you know, I didn't know where the issue was. And uh, I couldn't, I was reviewing the screen with my screen reader and I just couldn't figure it out. So having that ability to kind of quick share your screen uh, and then having that service like Be My Eyes with the Microsoft support team is actually really cool. We've never kind of had access like that till recently. And I think it's a it's a resource that we all should use if we get stuck like that. Um, Windows R uh, is a run command. So you can go in there. And if you're familiar with, with DOS, 
uh, like Lonnie Swafford out there. Uh, you will love Windows R. You can go in there and, and interact with your computer uh, in that way. I am not a DOS person. I it was in the very early of my childhood. Um, so I had a very few, very short time with it. Um, I've gotten better over the years, but I'm still, I'm not an expert with the run dialogue, but it does make uh, doing things a lot easier uh, for those who may not like to learn a lot of key commands. Cause if you, if you know how to interact with the run dialogue, you can be really fast. Um, Lonnie and I were talking about that recently. That's why I called him out on it. Um, the, the final command here before I jump to Angela is windows F. Um, so windows F allows you to provide feedback to windows. And this is important, uh, not so much to call out accessibility issues, but you can do that. So if there's something that you know was accessible or you think that should be accessible, you can notify uh, Microsoft about it. Now that's not something like you, you wouldn't want to necessarily report JAWS issues. So like if, if you try it with JAWS and NVIDIA and you have differing results, it probably is the fault of one of the screen readers. Uh, if, if you have crashes on both, then it's possibly something to do with the, the program. So you have to kind of figure that out, but you know, it's a great way to have a nice link to Microsoft and to sort of provide feedback on your experience. Um, you know, I, I've commented as Microsoft Office has improved over the years. Uh, I've made some some comments in there, you know, some things that I wish that um, would come. You know, I've put some features I'd like to see in there, you know, et cetera. So it, it's a nice way that you can sort of have your voice heard uh, by Microsoft itself. Screen sharing meeting. Come back over here. Uh, and I'm going to kick it over now to Angela to show a little bit and talk a little bit about some magnification things within Windows. Hello, everyone. So just as Joe said earlier, with Windows coming already built in with Narrator, it also comes with a built-in screen magnification system. So this is not as in-depth as... Um, Zoom text goes for those of you that may be familiar with that program or even Fusion, but it's good in a pinch or good when you are first setting up your computer and have not yet been able to download the software that you would like, or maybe your software is not working. It's always good to have a backup. So in order to enable this, you would hit, oh, I need to share my screen. I apologize. Let me do that real quick. Oh, Joe is not letting me um, share my screen. Try now. I, I went in and did multiple. Of started screen share desktop meeting controls can meeting controls participants uh, yeah. can now see your screen sorry. yeah we can hear you now okay awesome so in order to enable this screen magnification or screen windows magnifier you're going to hit your windows key and your plus key which um when i hit it here in just a second it's going to say equals because the equals and the plus key are the same key um that is the key to the left of your uh backspace Windows equals. So, and then that enables it. And also you would hit that as many times as you would need to, to zoom in um, to whatever your desired magnification level would be. Now to zoom out, you would do the opposite. So you would just hit Windows minus. Windows dash. Or my JAWS calls it Windows dash. But <laughs> so however, when using this with JAWS, um, I don't really find it as useful, but um, for those who are low vision and use scre um, screen magnification, I think this could be a very useful tool. And you can also navigate it using your uh, hotkeys commands so that you don't have to try to squint or use a, a you know a handheld magnifier to um, go through the search functions in order to enable this. So again, that is Windows key plus to enable and to zoom in, Windows key minus to zoom out. And to close the program, you would do Windows key escape. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so you can hear what that says. Windows escape. So it all it says is Windows escape. It does not tell me that it closed the program, but it also didn't tell me that it opened it. Um, but uh, yeah, 
So that's just a little bit about the basic built-in screen magnification system within Windows. As I said, it's not as um, advanced as what you may use with um, Zoom Texture Fusion. However, it does provide some basic um, screen magnification so you can get the job done. That's awesome. All right. Um, now muted. So Danielle, I, 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 I want to get to you one second, but I want to talk about the desktop real quick. I, I, went, I meant to do this before going over to Angela. I, I lost track of my notes there, but let's, so I'm going to show you guys talk about the desktop a little bit real quick. Um, so share option button drop down. You will start at screen share. So a desktop Windows D folder view. Some people are going to have your every, uh, some people are going to have every shortcut they could have uh, on the desktop and it's going to have like 150 items on there. Some people are going to kind of keep it nice and tidy and it might have 10 items on there. But a desktop is basically a really convenient place that you can store, uh, you know, a place that, like shortcuts to programs. You can launch, you know, your web browsers. You can launch maybe a game, you know, whatever you want to do here. So I'm going to just show you my desktop and kind of explain how to maneuver the desktop. And I'm going to talk real quick about a handy key command that some of you all might have. So if I'm on the desktop, Windows M, uh, which I'm now, I can hit down, up, left and right. Microsoft Teams checked five of five. So you hear I have five items here. This is a brand new computer, so I don't have a lot set up here. But if I hit up, Microsoft Edge checked four of five. So you hear Microsoft Edge. Now I'm going to press R for recycle bin. R recycle bin checked one of five. So this is where anything that you delete will go. Um, now there's what's called the context menu. So a lot of folks out there may know Shift F10. That will get you into your context menu. However, on a lot of computers, you can hold function, which is on typically on the left-hand side of your, your keyboard. So it usually goes, well, it, it, this all depends on the setup of your keyboard. On mine, it goes control, function, Windows, Alt. On some, it may go function, control, Windows, Alt. It really depends on the manufacturer. Uh, one way that you can do this and know what, what key is what, if you hit uh, JAWS, which on mine is the caps lock key, um, I set it up for the laptop layout. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to hold JAWS on. and press one. And it, you heard it say on. So if I can hit the, um, these keys, hey. uh, like if I hit, press a key on a keyboard, it will actually tell you what the key is. Um, JAWS key plus a document reading command actually off. describe, you know, you can hold JAWS and hit some of the keys and will let you know what they are. Uh, narrator also has the same functionality. Narrator actually does describe the keys uh, to you in the, the control uh, function. Uh, so, for example, if I hit the function with JAWS right now, FN lock off. You hear it say FN lock off. What that basically means now, if I were to hit like the F4 key, it would raise my volume. F3 would lower my volume. So, if I were to do Alt F4 right now, that command would not work because it would actually think that I was trying to raise the volume. So what you would have to do in this instance, if you were in this mode, is you would have to hit Alt Function F4. FN lock on. So I'm going to turn the lock back on. So now I can just press Alt F4. Micro recycle. But the key command I wanted to show you all, instead of hitting Shift F10 on a lot of the Microsoft products, Asus products, Lenovo, you can hold down Function and you can hit the right uh, it would be the right uh, control key. So on mine, it's to the left of the uh, left arrow. So if I hit this application key, context menu, you hear it say applications. And why that's nice is you're not having to hit shift and then look for F10 up at the top. So now if I wanted to go down here, empty recycle bin unavailable. D. It says unavailable because I have nothing in my trash because it's brand new. Uh, so this will let you empty your recycle bin or actually access any of the context sensitive uh, stuff in this menu. Pin to start escape, um, leaving menu. So on the desktop, again, you can browse by left, right, up and down. You can also move by first letter navigation. And I'm going Screen to sharing meeting. turn it over to Danielle. Alt. Stop sharing there. And Danielle's going to talk to you about another nice little feature. All right, can everybody hear me? Yep. Awesome. Um, so before I share my screen, I am going to be talking about the taskbar 
which is also going to include um, being able to switch between all your programs and also being able to switch between windows. And, and I'm going to throw everybody off by using NVDA and my voice is, my screen reader voice will be different than what Angela and Joy's are. So, you know, I'm going to be the curveball here. Uh, all right, let me. Okay. And what? And I am going to share my screen. Can everybody hear my? Uh, have it. Is it saying uh, something now? Yeah, it should be. Uh, let me try again because okay, I yeah. think my. No, I was trying to check the sound box and it didn't like me. Um, There it goes. You have started screen share preview. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, we can hear now. Screen share participants can. That's what happens when you switch between a QWERTY and a Braille display 20,000 times. And luckily, I remember to turn my speech on. All right, so I'm going to go to the start menu. Start window. Search window. And before I show you how to get to the taskbar and the to the taskbar to navigate around programs, I will be doing Alt and the Tab key. And so that you guys can hear it, I'm going to do a little quick um, command from NVDA that is my caps lock key and the number four. And it's going to toggle my speech echo. Speak command keys on. To speak. Also, not just the letters, but the command keys. So now I'm going to use Alt and Tab. Screen sharing me. Post attendee Zoom Google Chrome. Yeah. So now what it's doing is it's going through all my open programs that I've been working all day from this particular computer, unlike Joe's brand new computer. So it's going to tell you all the crazy windows I have, programs I have open. And using the alt tab, you can just kind of go all the way around and it's kind of, and it will just circle back around to the beginning. So this is a nice way if you are, you know, you say you're working on a document and then you want to look up something online and open all these programs and you can switch between those efficiently. Task view window, running applications list, post. Post attendee Zoom document, visited link graphics, screen share. Um, another quick one in this area is Windows tab. And I use this um, occasionally, for example, when I want to get back to my Zoom meeting, since it's a different window, I use the Windows tab to get back to that to control it. So I can use task view window. And I had no idea why this is. NVDA plus four. Speak command keys off. Speak command keys on. Window post attendee. There it goes. I, it wasn't telling me the keys there for a minute. All right. Task view window. Running applications list. And you can use your left and right arrow keys to see your um, what you have open. Right arrow. Screen sharing meeting controls column two, two of four. Right arrow, inbox reburden at ace LLC dot right arrow, one reminder, S. And that's just some of the, so that's just like a quick way you can see some of the things you have open and can switch back and forth. Um and I will was there something else you wanted to do, Joe? No, I think you covered it. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you did the desktop. Awesome. Um, 
since we've been going on about screamers, I think one thing that I don't think any of us um, thought to mention is a nice way to stop our screamers from talking is the control key. Um, I, I think we're all of us are so used to hitting that control key that we did not think to cover that. Um, so if you're new to using a screen reader, pretty much all of them, you know, it'll start talking and it'll start to drive you crazy. You can hit the control key to stop it from talking. And I think that's about all I have. That's a great tip. Um, yeah, with my jaws being so slow right now, talking, it's it like, Sometimes I tune out when it's saying, uh, it's, you know, so um, I don't know. I, I struggle with that. So um, what we're going to talk about next is we're going to do files and folders. Um, we're going to kind of show you basic navigation around there. There's there's a few things. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, do you need me to stop it, John? No, I think when I do this, you will start it screen share. kick you out. Let's see. Pause, share. share. Windows D folder. Can you hear my jaws now? Micro. No. Recycle bin check. Share up. Uh -oh. Pause share. Uh -oh. Share up. More options. Uh -huh. Hold on. Speech mode beeps. Yeah, yeah yours, oh, okay. yours is still showing. Yeah. Speech <laughs> mode talk. Task view window. Running applications list. Post at right arrow. Screen sharing meeting. Screen sharing meeting. Okay, there we go. All right. I did exactly what I just got done this point. Share, <laughs> Share content, Windows D, folder. All right, can you hear my jaws now? Microsoft. Yes. Okay, I awesome. Okay. So there's a few ways that you can look at files and folders. And there's actually lots of options you can sort of check and uncheck to sort of, you know, customize the experience to what you want. Uh, here, so let's kind of take a look briefly at what we can do in here. So I'm gonna I'm at the desktop, so I'm gonna hit Windows E to go to the Windows Explorer. Windows E File Explorer Items View List Box to move to an item. Press the arrow keys. Items View Multi Select List Box Folders Expand. I'm gonna hit that Control key to make Jaws be quiet. So now I can hit the right arrow key. Downloads checked. Two of six. Downloads, and I can hit left to go back to Documents. Desktop check. Or actually, Desktop. Sorry. Download documents checked. Documents is to the right. All right, so I'm going to go into a folder. So I'm going to go to downloads because I actually have some stuff in there. Downloads checked. I'm going to press enter. Enter. Downloads. Items view list box. The zoom installer. So I have like my zoom installer here because I downloaded that before the meeting. Now, let's say I, I'm tired of looking in here. How would I go back? I can hit, I can hold alt and hit the left arrow key. Alt left arrow. File explorer. Items view multi select list box. Folders expanded. Desktop not checked. No. And I'm back to that the last viewed folder. So I'm back to that documents, downloads, and desktop screen here. Documents, downloads, check. Now, so this is actually opening up my files and folders in one window. So when I go to downloads, and then let's say I had another folder in there called uh, tad, I could go into tad, and it's all going to be in one window. But let's say I didn't want that. So I wanted to have separate windows. I can hit start. I don't exactly know where this option is, but we're going to find it real quick. So I'm going to hit this, the Windows key. Search box edit. I go to my search menu. I'm going to type in, uh, I believe it's folders. F O F D E R. File explorer options. Control panel. Press right to switch. There we go. I'm going to press enter. enter. File explorer options dialog. General page. Open file explorer to combo box. Quick access. One of two. So quick access allows you to sort of see like your, your sort of quick uh, recently opened files. It kind of has that desktop download documents layout. This PC, two of two. You can also open up to this PC. So some of the folks coming from Windows 10 who've not messed with Windows 11, one of the things you're going to notice is you cannot get to this PC from the start menu anymore. So if you like, sometimes that's how I used to access this PC in Windows 10 a lot. So I'll just type in, I go to that search box and type in this and it would just pull up this PC. You cannot do that anymore. They've taken that away. Uh, so you can have it set to open here or you can get to it in your tree view and the uh, files and folder like in the Windows Explorer. Uh, so th those are options that you can do. Quick access. But I'm just going to leave it at quick access for right now. Browse folders, open each folder in the same window, radio button checked, one of two. So this is the option I was actually looking for. So let's say you wanted to have Windows open a different folder. I'm going to press the down arrow. Browse folders, open each folder in its own window, radio button checked, two of two, to so change this. I'm going to just change this. Ashley's iPhone. I'm going to change this feature only. Oh, general apply button. To so when you do this, you have to hit apply for it to save, uh, for it to remember it Ashley's every time. IPhone. So I'm going to press enter. enter. Open file explorer. 
General, cancel, OK button. To I'm going to press enter. OK. File explorer, items view, multi-select list box. Four. All right, so now. Docket, download. I'm going to open up enter. downloads. Downloads, items view. So now downloads is actually opened up in its own uh, window. So if I press Alt-Tab, for example, this is actually another command I don't think any of us has covered just because we use it so much, probably. So Alt-Tab will move you from any, it'll it'll kind of cycle your open application. So File Explorer to move to an item, now, press the arrow. By pressing alt Tab, I'm now back to the Fox or window. Documents, downloads. Where I can now hit right and left, and I'm at the Documents, Downloads folders. So if I hit Alt Tab again, downloads to move to an item. I'm back to my downloads page, uh, our downloads folder. So if I were to press up or zoom down, and Office Setup, check, Zoom install. You hear Zoom and Office. Uh, those are my things I've used recently. You can also hit. So that's you can hit Alt Shift Tab. Jaws home use and to move to a go uh, to your previously uh, kind of cycle the other way. So uh, your least used uh, thing. So I haven't been to the Jaws window, so that's where it took me in a long time. Um, Downloads to move to an item. Press the arrow keys. Do and I'm going to show you one more thing about the context key. I showed you that earlier. So let's J2 say Zoom installer check office setup check. Let's say okay, zoom. I've installed the Zoom file here. So it's in my downloads folder. I'm back in my downloads folder. I'm going to press the right arrow. Date modified. 8 slash 28 slash 20, 20, 3, 6. So here, the left and right keys will go through sort of file attributes. So you got your date. Type application 1 to 1. You got the type. It's an application. Size 33,238 KB 1 to 1. And you got your size. And if I go right again, it just doesn't say anything because that's all that's there. So if I hit left. Type application. Back to type. Date modified. Date and I'm hitting control to make Jaws be quiet. Zoom installer and then zoom installer. So let's say I don't want this file anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and press delete. And Jaws didn't tell me I did anything at all. That's awesome. <laughs> Jaws home use. Uh, Downloads to move. Okay, there we go. Office setup to Office J2000. But now it's gone. I can't see it. So now I went from Office and now I see the Jaws command. So sometimes you're going to get into situations where speech doesn't actually tell you anything it doesn't say anything uh and you're kind of like Name, did, I, edit, did I actually do the gesture i wanted um and so a good way to, to do that is just to you can either alt tab if, if focus gets lost like it did there so that's what happened i hit delete my focus wasn't reading anything i i tried pressing up and down it was like the focus was lost so i had to alt tab kind of back to this window um the other thing real quick i want to touch on before we end here Jaws home. is Downloads. So I'm going to press Alt F4, and I'm going to just show Alt you. Alt F4. Jaws home. And I'm going to press uh, Windows M to go to my desktop. Windows M. I'm sorry. Windows D. Folder view list. Uh, that's the command I like better. All right, so Windows D, I'm at my desktop, and I'm going to do uh, R for Recycle Bin. R. Recycle Bin checked. One to five. I'm going to press Enter. Enter. Recycle Bin. Items view. Multi-select list box. Not selected. Zoom installer. Not. So now we see Zoom is in here. So if I hit Windows D again, I go to my desktop. Windows D, folder view, list view, recycle. And I'm going to do the context feed, uh, the context menu. So you can do Shift F10, or you can do what I do and hold the, if, if your computer supports this, you can hold the function key and then hit the right control key. Applications, context menu and I'm to navigate. Press B, because I know empty recycle bin was B earlier. B, leaving menus, folder view, list view, recycle bin checked, one to five. To move to items, use the arrow keys. To edit the selected item, press F2. Desktop, delete file dialog. Are you sure you want to permanently delete this file? Yes button to activate. Press space bar. Alt plus Y. So at, at what happened there is a dialog came up. So you heard it kind of go back to the desktop, and then you heard it bring up a dialog that says, are you sure you want to remove this file? So you have a lot of options here. You can press Y, as you heard it say, for yes. Uh, you could hit N for no. So if I tab, you would actually hear it say. No button to activate. Press space bar. Alt plus N. You can press Alt plus N for no. Yes button to uh, act. Alt plus Y for yes. I'm just going to press enter since I'm on the enter, the yes button now. Enter. Folder view list view. Recycle bin. Check. And now that file is gone. So if I go back into recycle. F bin, enter. Recycle bin. Microsoft. It's completely empty. So if I'm, I'm arrowing up and down, you hear nothing. Alt F4. Desktop. The, the final thing I wanted to get to is some computers do have touch screens. So especially on laptops these days. Um, you actually heard me touch the screen on accident. <laughs> I, I put my finger too far up. But if you were to touch the screen, desktop list has focus. You now hear me controlling my computer with my finger uh, on the screen. So if I swipe left and right, recycle bin check selected has focus. Uh, I'm moving down my desktop. FS Reader 3.0 not checked. If I swipe left, recycle bin check selected has focus. And Jaws, NVDA, and Narrator all have different 
commands for touch screens. We're not really going to get into that um, during these sessions, really. But I just wanted to show you in case you were to bump your screen that you could, if you're like, why is it talking or what, what, what has happened? Um, that's what's happened. Um, if you're using JAWS in particular, sometimes this can invoke what's called the touch cursor. And it can make your navigation a little, uh, I'm going to use the word funky. Uh, it can change just sort of how it's reading. FS reader, recycle. Uh, so if you find yourself, it's, it didn't there, like I'm on my desktop and it's still fine. But if you were in like a Windows application and you notice like your keyboard shortcuts not working the way they were intended to, just press Alt Tab. File that, Explorer. That'll kind of reset everything. Alt F4, um, desktop, folder, there we JAWS, go. home, screen, sharing, meeting, controls, more options for chat button. We will, we will go ahead and open it up. Um, I, I want to kick it to Todd here at the end. But before we do that, uh, we've talked a lot, Angela, Danielle, and I. And I want to just see if there's any questions from the folks out there. Um, one, you know, do you have any questions about anything we talked about? And then B, do you have any feedback on what you would like us to cover? Um, because I think that's that's important. We want to we want to tailor these webinars to you all, and I think uh, you know you can either reach out to us during this event, or you can you know email Danielle, Angela, or I, or provide feedback. I believe on the TED website there probably is a spot that you could do so. Uh, we want to hear from you if you're listening to this in recording as well, because we want to know what to cover. So, um, is there any questions for the folks out there before we? before we turn it over to Todd and say goodnight. This is Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Um, first, thank you for your all's presentation. As someone who is um, typically a large print reader, I'm trying to use speech more often, um, especially because my husband tells me I need to. <laughs> um, so I appreciate the detail that you all went into tonight. One of the areas that I would love to know more about is, is just like using my phone and voiceover. That's an area that I struggle in. Okay. So, so just doing like basic navigation on your, on your uh, phone. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think that's Joe, it's idea. Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Hey, um, great presentation. I was wondering if there was, would be a way that you could, because I didn't get a chance to um, take a lot of notes, but, you know, maybe send out kind of like a cheat sheet, I'll say, you know, just some quick, you know, commands, you know, um, that'd be one question. And how to maybe uh, add like a program, uh, if somebody wanted to add like a program to the desktop, you know, as a like a shortcut, had how to add shortcuts to the desktop. Ah, yes, that, that is a, a, a great question. Um, so so the, to your first question, I think um, we haven't really talked about that, but I, I think that's something we could do is, is, so Angela, Danielle, and I are putting our notes like in a Google Docs uh, file, um, and we, we, we kind of write it for us, but what we could do is clean that up and possibly put that somewhere. I don't know if that's possible, Angela or Danielle. I don't know if you guys know. Um, that's maybe something we could attach with the webinar. This is Angela. We yeah, could ahead. potentially post that to our TAD website um, with the link to tonight's um, presentation. Yeah, uh, I think that would make sense. So yeah, if we could do that, that'd be awesome. Because um, I think we can clean up what we have and it would give you all pretty good context. So, um, and as far as making a desktop shortcut, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show, I guess we have a little time. We have a little time, right? Uh, I don't know what time it is. I'm looking. We have all the time. Almost the eight. World. Yeah, it's almost eight. I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick, if you guys don't mind, I'll do a quick demo with that real fast. Um, so I'll share my screen here. You have started screen share. So I'm going to do the one of the common ones because I haven't done this yet. Windows D folder view. From my screen. Participants can. And that is, I'm going to create a JAWS desktop. Uh, shortcut because um, well, actually Jaws. Yeah, Jaws. Went um, I lied. Jaws is already there. <laughs> um, FS I said I was going to do this, and now I don't have any files to put. Microsoft Teams. Actually, actually, I do. Search box Z O O M Zoom app. Press right to switch preview. All right. So I don't have Zoom on my desktop. So if I wanted to get it there, I can uh, search for Zoom in my Windows fo uh, 
file search box. So I just hit the Windows key and then type zoom. And then I'm gonna do a context key on it. So shift F10 or the function right control. Applications, bing, bing, context menu list box. Open file location, run as administrator, so, open to stop. So let's look at a few things we can do here. Oh, run as administrator, one so of five. Run as administrator, which basically means if we didn't have admin rights, we could run as an administrator, put a password in and, and run the, the file. You could do this like, you know, say I was uh, on your computer, Debbie, I, you know, you, you could create an account for me and then you could actually authorize me to run a certain app that I may not have authorization to. Open file location, two uh, of five. This is open file location. This command here is actually super handy for uh, learning how to, so for example, if you want to do JAWS, you want to create a shortcut like Control Alt J to launch JAWS, you would actually go here and you could set that up. Um, we may show that at a different time. Pin to start, three of five. So this is pin to start. So this would actually allow you to, to save it in your start menu where you could easily access it as well. So the start menu allows you to access a lot of programs quickly, just like the desktop does. We didn't really cover that here. I don't use it typically. I don't know if Danielle or Angela um, use their start menu for that, but I used to use it like back in XP, but I found myself not doing that these days. Pin the taskbar, four or five. Pin the taskbar. So this is what Danielle was talking about with uh, adding apps to the taskbar in her uh, spot. Uninstall, five or five. And then uninstall. Run as administrator. So open file location, two or five. Open the file Enter. location. More options for chat button drop down. Zoom. Items view multi select list box. Zoom checked. Eight slash 20. Right. So now I've gone to the folder itself. So what I'm going to do is do the application, application again. Context. We're going to kind of see the same sort of Open file, setup, open. Right? Oh, properties. Rename. Now, and delete. De create shortcut. S. The difference is, though, copy. we actually have a few other things in here. So we can like copy, cut it, cut, et cetera. Set, restore. And one thing I did not cover, and I, I meant to, and it's a great time for it, you can copy things by Control C, cut things by Control X, and paste things with Control V. Um, so as you can tell, Windows is very, you know, there's so many parts to it. Um, but if you ever don't know what something is, hit that contact, go into the context menu. And for example, if I hit down, send us restore, share, cut T, it'll say cut T. So that means you would hit control plus T copy C control plus C to copy cut, send to sub menu N. and then Bluetooth you device. can send Compress desktop, create shortcut D. So this is where you would go, Debbie. So you would, this is the, so there is a create a shortcut. You can do that, but this is the easiest way. So if you go to send, spin, to, sub -menu, send to sub menu S send to, you press the right arrow key to expand that. Bluetooth device D. Compress zip desktop create shortcut D. You can press this right here. So I'm gonna press that. I'm gonna press enter on that. Enter leaving menus, zoom, items view, multi select. Now I'm gonna press Windows D to go to my desktop. Windows D, folder view, list view, Microsoft Teams check, Z, zoom check, six of six. I press Z and now zoom is there and I have six items. I used to have five. So that's created that desktop shortcut. That's the quickest way to do it um, that I've seen. And you can do that, you know, from, so if you had a document even, you can go to send to and you can create a, uh, you know, if you have a favorite document that you always want to look at, you can send it right to your desktop and then open that. You don't have to go into my documents or, you know, wherever else you store it every time. Zoom to move to an item. Items view multi select list box. Zoom check. Alt F4. Thought, desktop. That was the Zoom client. And I remembered, oh, that's the Zoom folder. <laughs> screen share. Jaws. Screen go. sharing meeting controls. Alt D. Alt. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have any, any questions? And Debbie did, that, Debbie, did that answer your question? I just want to make sure that that, that made sense. Yeah, I think I'd probably have to do it a couple times to figure it out. But, you know. Yeah. And if. Listen back to the recording and it'll, it'll walk you step through step on that. But you can also, um, you know, if you if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Joe, this is Lonnie. Hey, Lonnie. So I appreciate the presentation, and uh, I just want to say there there are some things. I'm a big iPhone user, but there are some things you just, in my opinion, can do easier with a desktop. So I appreciate this a lot. Um, I've noticed a lot for feedback from folks. If we could consider a presentation for OneDrive and Dropbox, um, I think that would, would help a bunch. If we could look into doing that. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, just for anybody who may not know what those are, those are cloud storage services. Uh, OneDrive 
typically if you have Microsoft Office is is sort of the 365, it's it's included typically with that. Um, I believe you get two terabytes of storage, so it's or maybe it's a terabyte. I forget, but it I think I have two, but it's it's a nice uh, it's a nice amount of storage that you can get as part of your subscription. So that yeah, definitely I think we should add that. Anything else? All right, Todd, uh, I'll let you uh, have the final word. Okay, thank you, uh, Joe. Thank you, Angela, and thank you, Danielle. A fantastic presentation. I was remiss in not introducing myself in the beginning. I'm Todd Stevens, and I'm the president of the Technology Assistance Division, otherwise known as TAD, and I've been president for the, uh, the last 12 years. Uh, we are uh, we want to do everything that we can as a division of the National Federation of the Blind of Kentucky affiliate uh, to get everyone up to speed so that they can feel comfortable with technology. Um, I also want to um, remind or to uh, let everyone know that they need to register for our convention, we would love to see you there. Uh, the convention is October 6th and 7th. It is at 9850 Park Center Drive in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, you can register at our website. That is nfbky.org slash affiliate, A-F-F-I-L-I-A-T-E dash convention and um, hopefully we will see you uh, for our 11th annual TAD symposium uh, as well as uh, our uh, state convention which will uh, our general session will take place on Saturday um, and uh, we will wrap things up uh, Sunday morning uh, with our uh, annual business meeting. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, and uh, have a great night.